15 chefs remain in this week's Top Chef Breakdown, aptly named Rice Rice Baby. And let's see how much of Vanilla Ice's hit song I can play before getting a copyright strike. Mm. We start out with Boo to give it a little wisdom to the other contestants, and it sounds like Charbel has sampled the Chardonnay a little bit too much. It's been a long day. Vámonos ya. Guest judge Santiago Lastra owns the only Michelin star Mexican restaurant in the UK. Upon his arrival, we launch straight into the quick fire challenge. A moose bouche using only one ingredient that can fit on top of a Ritz cracker. What's up, man? Hey, man, what you doing? Painting. Crackers. And Santiago explains that if it wasn't for Ritz, he may have never become a chef in the first place. Get this man some Ritz crackers! Padma explains that Ritz is on a mission to make the world a more inclusive place, but Charbel and Victoire aren't interested. After the chefs grab their one ingredient, Padma explains the twist. They have to work together in groups of threes with the three ingredients that the three of them picked. And that's a few too many details for Sylvia. Too many twists for the one Polish guy. $10,000 in cash prizes plus immunity is on the line, and a few contestants try knocking each other physically out of the competition. Charbel picked jackfruit. I'm working on my jackfruit right now. And I'm just playing that clip because I'm a toddler. Three, two, one. Hands up, crackers down. Look at all these crackers. Sarah, Nicole, and Sylvia had guajillo peppers, horseradish, and goat cheese. Sarah fried her Ritz in brown butter and guajillo peppers with goat cheese, pepper, jelly, and apple, and horseradish salad. Nicole had a grilled bavette with goat cheese and horseradish black garlic jam and salsa matcha. Sylvia made guajillo peppers on a pillow of goat cheese with truffle. For this quick fire challenge, they decide the winners of each group immediately after the round, and it's weird. This, this is gonna be really hard. Come with me. And they're gonna decide right now. Tom, Amar, and Begonia had pequillo peppers, patarga, and oyster leaves. Begonia ran out of time making her oyster leaf mousse and batarga tapenade. I was in another world. So you ran out of time. Yeah. I feel really stupid. Amar made a smoked cod dip with avocado, pickled mustard seed, and shaved batarga. Tom makes shrimp cocktail my way. And then he and then he makes a face like he's made the most amazing joke on the planet. <laughs> it consists of a shrimp tartare, avocado roulade, oyster leaf, and batarga persilade sauce. Charbel, Luciana, and Dale choose wasabi, plantains, and capers. Charbel sautéed corn with capers and added plantains. Dale made plantain fried cod with wasabi caper aioli. Luciana made plantain salsa with fried capers and wasabi. Ali, Victoire, and May choose yeast extract, kumquat, and hibiscus. Victoire made panzanella with kumquat salad and smoked mackerel. Ali made yeast extract with marscapone mousse, kumquat jam, and glazed hibiscus. May made spicy kumquat jam with hibiscus juice and yeast extract. Gabri, Don, and Buddha picked jackfruit, tamarind, and caviar cream. Buddha made veal tartare with jackfruit, tamarind, and caviar cream. Don made a caviar butter based in salmon with tamarind and jackfruit tiger cry, which got its name from being so spicy it makes a tiger cry. Gabri made jackfruit a la Mexicana with caviar paste and tamarind butter. And I thought I wasn't going to eat a lot today. The winners were Nicole, Tom, Dale, May, and Gabri, but May takes home the prize. Then we get the main theme of our elimination challenge. Rice. You spin me rice. rice. We meet the host of Top Chef South Africa, Lorna Maseko, where Padma shames Victoire for her past risotto sins. Or if you are daring a risotto. <laughs> <laughs> no make a risotto. The chefs get to choose their own adventure for this challenge, but they do have to cook for over 100 patrons at Alexandra Palace. The chefs start shopping and Gabri wants to make a mole with 50 goddamn ingredients. And his cart is only half full of them, and he's already spent his $350. But May is feeling generous, so she lets him use the rest of her budget. Don is making black rice kanji, which is a real challenge given the time constraints. Tom is a little out of his element for one little simple fact that I did not know. There's not a single rice dish in whole bloody Germany, man. <laughs> Luciana's making kedgeri that's going to require her to cook and peel 100 eggs. That's only going to make up for the 50 that are going to be eaten by Cool Hand Luke. W58. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think that's funny. I don't think it's funny, but I love how he says, Nobody can eat 50 eggs. <laughs> you ever eat 50 eggs? Fun fact, I've never actually seen Cool Hand Luke, uh, but I did grow up watching Reality Bites, and I always wondered what the fuck he was talking about. No one can eat 50 eggs. I, I just thought it was a weird thing that someone says. The 90s were weird. Dale is also making kanji for the first time, and if this was last season, I'd make my kanji joke, but I'm not going to do that. Kanji all the time. 
Amar announces that he will be stealing two pots of water. Anybody? Two pots of water sitting here? Anybody done with it? But then becomes a little tight-lipped when it turns out to be Luciana's pots. <laughs> and Don jumps on the grenade and takes the blame because she also took one of the pots. Oh, I didn't know. Is that's, this, what, this is that's mine, yeah. Okay. We asked a lot. But I did the here. Uh-huh. She does this just in time to notice that her black rice isn't cooked enough. It's not cooked enough. Black rice requires a lot more time. Dawn, in an effort to speed up the cooking of her black rice kanji, decides to put it under pressure. pressure. That's not too obscure, right? Everyone knows that Queen ripped off Vanilla Ice when they wrote their famous hit, Under Pressure. Wrong! The guests start to arrive, and Tom decides to try the sparkling mead. Why? Because why not? Luciana made kedgeri with curry, smoked haddock fish, and duck egg. Sarah made an everything rice cracker with salmon, cucumber, and cream cheese. Nicole made crispy furikake rice with Nijitoro, and it looks delicious. Begoni made lemon rice with pickled ginger, beetroot, and seaweed. Sylvia made coconut rice with Thai-style masaman curry. Victoire made basmati rice with sauce, mayf, and shrimp. Buddha made Hainanese chicken and rice, and I'm officially starving. Gabri made green risotto and mole negro. Dale made kanji with short ribs, pickled mushrooms, and chili oil. Tom made Sri Lankan lamb biryani and raisins, goji berry salad, and green sauce. May made rice pudding with watermelon puffed rice, salted coconut milk, and sweet potato. Charbel made Lebanese spiced masmati rice with grilled chicken, mint, cucumber yogurt, toasted nuts, and fried parsley. Ooh. Ali made lamb uzi, smoked rice, toasted nuts, minted cucumber, and yogurt. Uzi just happens to be one of my favorite combinations of cutest word and most dangerous object. Uzi. Not as much fun as this. I shot you with an uzi. The young lady with the uzi. Freeze! Goddamn dope man oozy by my temple! Amar made pomegranate beef stew with saffron arancini and herb yogurt sauce. And Don made black venus congee with black bean and five spice braised oxtail. Whoo. As an added torture this season, they seem to be calling both the winners and the losers over to the judges' table together so no one knows whether they're winning big or getting sent home. Gabri with his mole negro really spoke to the judges as most risottos need an earthy component to add to it. May's dish that was a dedication to her mother and grandmother had just the perfect combination of sweet, sticky rice pudding and crunchy rice cakes to dip it in. Ali wowed the judges by smoking the rice that is normally cooked underground, but instead of dedicating it to his mom, he decided to rub it in her face. I'm sorry, mom, but today I cook better Uzi than you. <laughs> At the bottom was Sylvia, Dawn, and Luciana. All three had delicious dishes minus significant mistakes with the rice. Sylvia added vanilla salt to the last minute that made it too sweet. Luciana's rice was somehow both overcooked and undercooked, but the black rice proved to be just too temperamental for Dawn to make a convincing con out of it in two hours, and they sent her home. Dawn admitted that she may have made a mistake choosing the black rice, but she reiterated that's what she wanted to do, and if the judges didn't like it, she was okay with it. There's nothing wrong with choosing the opposite of a simple path. Sometimes you swing big and you miss. Sometimes you don't. That wraps up episode two. Tonight's episode three looks like a doozy. You won't want to miss it because how else are you supposed to get the most out of these breakdowns? They come out every Thursday before the next episode. Watch them, like them, share them, learn from them, ignore them, copyright them, steal them, record them, bootleg them, use them, cherish them, adorn them, print them out. That's all I can think of on the top of my head. I think I, I, think I got it. Najee Harris, oh, big time move! Harris with a stiff arm and the toss. You don't like rice? Meow. No. No. The winners were... Paste, you dick. Paste. Ugh. I can cut that together, can't I? Fuck yeah, I can. You know why? Because I have to. You spin me right, right.